it is getting a little later in the day so i'm not sure how this is going to show up on camera to be perfectly honest guys and i apologize for that but let me just say we have been monitoring these blackberries the kids have been on top of it um, a little backstory, my eight-year-old was the one who begged me to plant these several years ago when he was a little bitty guy. And so he and my little sister, who is 11, stay on top of these plants. And I'm excited to show it off. Uh, you can see the birds have nipped at it a little bit because we have a mama mockingbird. But this berry is ripe and it can be eaten now, but they want it to be as dark as possible. So that's pretty exciting because if you don't know we are in we are south of houston about 45 minutes south of houston texas um to the southeast right on the bay and that means that we have a pretty steady climate overall now it has been getting colder over the last few years but around here even so a lot of the berry farms their berries do not ripen as far as blackberries until about may usually mid-may to june but sometimes may however it is easter weekend it is the last weekend in march and look at this we have this gorgeous blackberry we have several berries here you can see one and one down here that is are turning red and that kind of showcases the different stages of the berries turning color so i wanted to walk through really fast and show some different color variations if you're new to growing blackberries and you haven't really seen them change color maybe you're wondering exactly what they look like when they start to change so let me show a little bit of these berries and what it's like so they start off as flowers like this and once they get pollinated the flower will fall off and it'll turn into a berry and unlike other fruit berries aren't just one ovary they're multiple um together and that's what forms the berry so that's pretty unique and so they start out like this all nice and fuzzy and then eventually it starts forming a berry so they get really small berries like this one which over time will plump up and get bigger and bigger until they're pretty close to starting to ripen. Now on our berry plants, even when they start to ripen, they still swell a little bit more between that time. So here are a ton of green berries. You can see they're all different sizes. I do apologize because the wind is blowing a little bit, a nice cool breeze today, even though it's very hot outside. But you can still see all of the different berries. They are doing incredibly well. This is my Arkansas Traveler. It is a thornless erect blackberry. It is a primocane berry, which means it produces on the first year and the second year canes, which are these little branches. So it allows people who experience any kind of fungus or pest to cut their berries down, or even if they just don't wanna look at the berries over the winter that aren't producing. You don't have to deal with it. You don't have to worry about the headache of cutting down the wrong canes and not getting any berries. So it's really great for beginners. In my opinion, it is one of my favorite berries of all time and by far one of the best producers. So it's also thornless, which I know I've said, but I want to emphasize that because having an upright berry is more accessible and having a thornless berry is more accessible, um, especially for children or anyone that just doesn't want to get poked with berry thorns every time they go to pick one. We live in Texas. Dewberries grow wild here, but they are terrible to have to bend over or worry about snakes getting into them or anything else um, and the thorns. So this is such a great option. Now you can see where they have kind of gone from green and swelling and then they start to get a tinge of red. Just a little bit, just like this. And then a little redder until they kind of turn like this. So you can see this berry is pretty bright red. And then they kind of go from that bright red to a little more deeper red, almost a maroon, which is kind of like the berry I first showed you. Over here you can see the berry starts to fill out just a little bit more and goes from being hard to a bit softer 
and then it starts to turn purple and eventually it'll turn a really dark purple and even black but I can tell you this much if you wait until these berries are 100% really dark in color they will not store for a long period of time at this rate they'll store easily for a week but another thing is is that if you want a good jam out of them or to dehydrate them you don't want to let them get fully ripe now if you want to make jelly and all of that it's going to be a little bit different you're going to end up wanting you know getting the seeds out and everything else. So you want berries that are squishier or cooked down well. For me, I'm a big fan of using all of it. I even enjoy the crunch of the little seeds that are in berries. So for me, I'm gonna pick them a little bit sooner so they're not as sweet and not as messy. And so that um, they don't get overly ripe or fermented and they cook down a little bit better also. When you add sugar to things, it can get really sweet. So I do like make, picking them a little bit underripe so that they can just have that perfect tangy flavor when I make any kind of jams with them. And also, they are so good to eat, especially on a hot day. You can freeze them and just eat them like little berry popsicles, which is a fan favorite here. But there are so many options for these berries. So I really wanted to share that with everybody. I love covering these Arkansas Traveler berries.